was 13, I was being constantly tormented. At school, people would tell me to kill myself. They would call me every horrifying thing that you can imagine. And I would come home every day and I would cry. I would lock myself in my room and I would not speak to anyone. This is just one of the times in my life that I felt afraid. Okay, let's pause. Everybody, unclench. Let's all take a big deep breath together. Ready? Now, I imagine most of you just thought, oh my God, no, I know this talk is about PTSD. Please don't make me sit through this. And to that, I'd say, too bad. I have barred the doors and you are stuck in here with me. Hi, I'm Ruth. Nice to meet you. I am a law and justice student. I use they, them pronouns and I have post-traumatic stress disorder. Ba, ba, ba. It's very ominous. First up, let's start with some quick definitions. Post-traumatic stress disorder happens after someone is exposed to a traumatic event. While these events are always hard, most people recover after a few weeks with support from their friends and family. Not everyone does though, and that's when we have to look at the following three characteristics. You re-experience the trauma, for example, through nightmares or consistent intrusive memories. You consistently try to avoid things that remind you of that event, and you believe that you're always in danger. You're on edge a lot, basically. The important thing to note about PTSD is it impairs your ability to function normally in your daily life. Most people's first thought when they meet me is, oh my god, what horrifying thing happened to you? And the first and only answer to that is, it's really none of your business? That is between me, my therapist, and also TikTok. First tip of the presentation, guys, don't ask someone with PTSD what happened to them. As you can imagine, it's an incredibly personal thing and I really don't feel like bearing my soul to every curious person I meet. When someone is comfortable with telling you, they will. What's the image that pops into your head when you think of someone with PTSD? It's probably not someone who looks like me, right? It's probably someone who's been in the military. There's this pervasive idea that only people who have been in the military can have PTSD. While it's undoubtedly true that some veterans do experience PTSD, not contesting that at all, the important thing to note is veterans aren't the only people who could have PTSD. Post-traumatic stress disorder doesn't have a look. You are never going to be able to just look at someone and assume what their experiences have been. When I first got diagnosed, I told myself, nope, I cannot have PTSD. I have not been in a war zone. I have not gone through real hardship. I am just overreacting. But the thing that I had to learn was that someone else's suffering does not erase your own. Traumatic events can include many things. A car crash, a really bad relationship, someone close passing without warning. These would all classify. And where there is a traumatic event, there is potential for PTSD. To switch it up a bit, the term disability is wide to cover a large range of things, including disorders which affect someone's thought processes, emotions, or perceptions of reality like PTSD. When I first got diagnosed, people started referring to me as a person with a disability. At first, this made me really uncomfortable. But then I stopped to ask myself why that was. It's because my disability is invisible. It's not immediately obvious that I have one. And so in my head, that somehow made it less valid. The disabled community is hugely diverse. Not everyone in it is going to think of themselves the same or have the same experiences. I am disabled. That is not a bad thing. It's also not a good thing. It's just a fact. There's nothing inherently moral about it. When we're talking about disability, it often comes with a lot of jargon that the average person probably isn't going to fully understand. Triggered is one of those words. It's a loaded word nowadays, that's for sure. Some people may already have their own perceptions about it. Something I have noticed, though, is the perception of the word is rarely in line with the reality of what it actually means. When someone is triggered, they are experiencing an intense and conditioned reaction to something that has previously caused them distress. So, to illustrate, I will be telling you about a time I was triggered. One night, as my roommate was getting ready, she dropped her high-heeled shoes on the hardwood floor of our apartment and made a really loud noise. This caused me to have a panic attack, and I spent the next hour sobbing uncontrollably in a closet. That may seem like an overreaction, but what was actually happening was a complicated and deeply rooted trauma response. 
To start off with, people with PTSD typically have higher levels of brain arousal, which is essentially how alert you are. Let's just say that the average a person runs at day to day is like here. My brain is like here. Combine that with traumatic experiences and the human brain's incredible pattern recognition and you have a recipe for disaster. So, when that loud noise happened, my brain went, loud noise? Do you remember the really bad thing that happened the last time there was a loud noise? And it turns on my fight or flight. My heart rate accelerates. My breathing speeds up and I start to sweat more. I become convinced that I am now in danger. I also disassociate which makes me feel like I'm separate from my own body. And so I go and hide in a closet because small spaces make me feel safe. Eventually though, I calm down and I realize that nothing is wrong. But for the rest of the day, I'm on edge and I'm shaking. And I also have to have a really awkward conversation with my roommate about why I fled the room like someone had set a tiger on me. It doesn't seem like an overreaction once you break it down, right? PTSD isn't some monster under the bed. If you look it in the face, if you call it what it is, you take away its power and it becomes less scary as a result. When I am triggered, I am not merely angry or upset. I am experiencing a situation in which my body and my brain are convinced that I am in very real danger and they are doing everything they can to protect me. That's why trigger warnings are so important for me. They allow me to leave if I know I can't handle this today, or it means I can implement coping skills to deal with the content. PTSD isn't just something you have no control over though, it is possible to treat. Even if you can't completely reduce your symptoms, most people see a big increase in their quality of life after seeking treatment. As cheesy as it sounds, it does get better. Therapy is your first option and it's great. I've been going to therapy for over a year. Um, it's really improved my quality of life. Trauma-focused therapy helps you unpack your emotions in a safe, supportive environment. My therapist used a really great metaphor to describe PTSD. You know when you've got people coming over but you have not cleaned the house so you kind of just grab all your stuff and shove it in a cupboard? Trauma is kind of like that. The first time you bump that cupboard, everything is going to fall out on the floor. For me, that meant crying in closets. But if you take the time to pack more and more things away, maybe less and less things will fall out and maybe nothing will. Therapy has given me the tools that mean when I am triggered, I have the ability to calm myself down. Now, I still get triggered, but it's less serious. Some days are still better than others, but I don't have to cry in closets anymore. You could say that I came out of the closet. <laughs> that is a bad joke, but I'm keeping it. Medication can be an option too. Antidepressants are typically prescribed for people with PTSD. It's not going to completely fix things, but it can regulate your mood. Medication is a very individual thing though, so it's always best to speak with your doctor about what your needs are. I'm on two types of medication. They've been really great for me because along with PTSD, I also have generalized anxiety and depression. Medication means I don't have random panic attacks anymore and my mood is generally more stable, which means my illness interferes with my life less. For most of the life of this talk, this was the section where I talked about all the horrible emotions that my mental illness subjected me to. At first, it felt really nice to finally be honest with my voice, to use it to speak the truth of my mental illness. The more people I said it to though, the worse I started to feel. I realized that I was unconsciously feeding into expectations that people already held. I was challenging nothing. I fed this idea that mental illness must be a story with a happy ending. This story does not have a happy ending because it was never a story to start with. I'm not a hero or a protagonist. I am a person with a mental illness. It is as simple and as complicated as that. Everyone wants this inspiring story about a person who goes through a lot but with strength and courage can reach out. You get to feed off of my inspiration. It makes you feel good. Wow, I listen to them. What an empathetic person I am for paying attention to their plight. But I don't owe you inspiration. I don't owe you vulnerability. And I'm not going to stand here and bear my wounds for all to see so that you may, f may feel better about your lives for a moment. I signed up to do this talk.
because I was angry. I was angry with how people made assumptions about me. I was angry with how people assigned me pity that I did not ask for. And I was angry because I never saw the reality of my life depicted truthfully. Somewhere along the road of writing this, I lost that anger. I want it back. Disabled people aren't allowed to be angry, even though we live in a world that isn't built for us. We must placate able people at every turn in order to survive, and I, for one, have had enough of doing it. So, this time, instead of patting yourselves on the back for being gracious enough to empathize with me, I challenge you to do something harder. Ask yourself, how do my actions make the world more difficult for people with a disability? And when you find one, and you will, Instead of feeling bad about it, go do something.